Right, so insertion sort. The algorithm is really short. You've seen that. It's not very complicated. Um, but unfortunately, it is n squared. It's a double loop. Okay, so we start with the same premise that the clever algorithms use. And that's if we've got a set of numbers, we assume the first item, so let is on its own in a separate list. So we have basically two lists. Uh, so let's have some number. We'll go ascending on this one. We'll just have that many. Okay, so we've got our list of numbers 10, 4, 9, 12, 15, 2, 6, and s let's have a 7. Yeah. And 7, um, but the algorithm, even though there the, the isn't two lists, but we treat the data as two lists. So we have a sorted list, and then a list that we can we know isn't sorted. Okay, and all we attempt to do is to take each item in turn from the unsorted list. So if we just put a little bit of annotation here, sorted, unsorted. We take one item at a time from the unsorted list and we look back through the sorted list and find the position it should exist. We insert it into the list, which is why it's called insertion sort. We're going ascending on this one. So what we're looking for, if a value in the sorted list is larger than the current one we're trying to place, then we need to move it across. Okay. <clears throat> and again, we can we can see how the algorithm's going to work. We've got a sorted list currently that's got one item. How many items are going to be in the sorted list when we've done the first insert? Two. Yeah, two. So we can actually draw what the sorted list is going to be. So it's never going to go past this end unless your drawing is terrible. Um, but we're going to we're going to have that as our space. That's what's going to happen. So I'm going to put a marker on the one that I'm going to place. And what the algorithm does, it takes a copy of this, because we are actually going to obliterate that position. We're going to need to move, let's just talk about how this one's going to work. We're going to need to move the 10 out of the way, because it's going to shuffle to the right. And again, this might seem like an expensive thing but if we're in the CPU cache then this will be ultra quick okay so a lot of these array based uh, sort algorithms are really quick if you can stay in the cache and insertion sort works best with short lists so the chances are that you can get that into the cache right so the 10 is going to move so it's going to overwrite the position where the 4 is okay so we do take a copy. So if we just call that key, so let's call it K. So the key is for, all we do is you write, okay, look at the right hand side of the sorted list <clears throat> and we compare the key value with the item that we're currently looking at. And we say, right, oh, hang on a minute, tens bigger than the number we're trying to place. So let's move the 10 one position to the right. Remember that's easy in a race, you just add one to your index. So the 10 ends up there. Effectively obliterating, overwriting that, the value of four. So if we didn't take a copy of it into a variable, we'd have lost the value. When we do the shuffle, we shift to the right, we then say, right, we'll move to the next item. We've gone off the end of the list. There is no next item. So at that, that point, we would say, right, we found the insertion point. The insertion point is one to the right of where we were trying to look. And that's how the algorithm works. So we say, right, well, what would that number be? If this, if this was a list with one item, what is that index? Yeah, so that was naught. We subtract one from it to go left. We go minus one. So to find, and you'll see in all the decent insertion sort algorithms, 
the insert point is always wherever we're looking plus one. So if you do minus one plus one, you get zero. A yawn is zero, because we should have done this in period three, shouldn't we? But hey, we all voted. It was democratic-ish. Right, so uh, we're going to insert there. Always double check when you're doing these. It should be in order, that list. That leaves us with a shorter unsorted list. But remember, we talked about this. You could actually perpetually feed from a network source or a file source a stream of data or from a sensor. If a sensor producing data and you need to keep it in order. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it could do that. Right, so the next phase is going to be placing the nine. So let's put a, a marker. Let's allocate where the sort of list is going to sit. So it's going to be there to there. We'll set up our key value. So key value is going to be nine. We're going to put our our pointer on our sorted list at the right hand side and we're going to look at those two numbers so right, oh, 10 is bigger than our key so let's move 10 to the right so 10 overwrites the 9 which is why we've got the key copy we then move back with our pointer and again I'm annotating this so I'm giving the examiner a little bit of a clue as to what I'm doing I'm not writing loads but I'm, I'm showing motion with an arrow Right, so we then look at our key and our current position in the sorted list, and we say, right, four. Oh, four's not bigger. So we must have found our insertion point. Our insertion point is going to be one to the right of where we're currently looking, which puts it there, and that's where we put the nine. So it's like sliding block puzzles. We've moved and left a space. Now... We're, we're having to draw down this because we're demonstrating it in phases, but that didn't involve any copying by insertion sort. Insertion sort didn't have to move the four, did it? The four's already at position naught. So, and the only thing that's happened is we've shuffled one value and then we've written a nine at a position. Now, you can work out how many times you're going to have to do this because it's going to be how big the unsorted list is at the start. Okay, so we're on to the next phase where we're going to try and place the 12. So our key value is going to be 12. We need or we'll have four items in our sorted list when we finish. We're going to put our little marker next to the 10 and we're going to say right okay it is 10 bigger than 12 no so insertion sort says straight away oh i found the insert point for 12. now this is one of those weird anomalies we're going to overwrite 12 with 12. you can't do anything about that you could put logic in but the logic would take longer to, than writing the value so we don't bother so we say right we're looking at position 10 one place to the right is where we found our insert point these values don't move, we're just writing them down again to keep our diagram clear. So that insert was just basically a comparison and then we wrote 12 to the array. That was it. So that one was quite quick. Right, so moving on, we've got left 15, 2, 6 and 7. So we're going to try and place 15. So... Let's show that the sorted list will have five, five items in it when we're finished. So, starting with the very right hand side of the sorted list, looking at the biggest item. Oh, it's not bigger than 15, so we've found our insertion point. So, the 15 is going to be written one place to the right. So, where we're looking at the 12, one place to the right is there. Let's just copy those down so we've got a nice clear diagram. But the, the algorithm is not doing anything. It's just written 15. So we copied 15 to a variable, did a comparison, and wrote 15 back. Okay, so we've got three left to place. So this time our key value is 2. 
We're going to need space for an additional item in the sorted list. Because the two is going to live in there somewhere. Now this is an example of where insertion sort does a little bit more work than normal. Okay. Right, so 15 is bigger than 2. So we need to move that to the right one place. Move back. 12 is bigger than 2. It needs to move right one place. Move back. 10 is bigger than 2. So that moves one place to the right. We move back. So we're now looking in the sorted list at position at 9. Uh, 9 is bigger than 2. So that needs to move out of the way by moving right. We then move back. 4 is bigger than 2. So that needs to move to the right. We then move back and we've fallen off the end of the list. So we found our insertion point, which is one position to the right. So the two gets written there. So yeah, the insertion sort had to do a lot of moving there, which is always like a negative of using arrays is that you're having to move data around when you're doing sorting. But hey, we've got two items left, six and seven. So our next key is six. Let's make sure we've got space for to accommodate the six along with the other sorted items. Put our marker at the right hand edge of the sorted list. Right, compare it with the key. It's bigger than the key. Let's move it right. Move back in the sorted list. 12 is bigger than our key value of 6, so we're going to move it right. Move back. And I'm, I'm trying to write this quite neat so the numbers are still in columns. Um, just to try and make it easy for someone to follow. Right, 10 is bigger than 6, so we're going to move that right. Move back in the sorted list. 9 is bigger than 6, so we're going to move that right. Move back in the sorted list. 4 is not bigger than 6, so we've found our insert point. Our insert point is one position to the right of where we're currently looking, which is at the 4. So we're going to write the 6 there. That's it. We're copying that down, remember, but the algorithm doesn't have to do anything with the 2 and the 4. We've got our final item to place. Our key value is 7. Let me scroll that up a little bit. The entire sorted list is going to occupy all the numbers. We start at the right hand side of the sorted list and we go through the while loop. So 15 is bigger than 7, so it moves to the right. We go back 1 in the sorted list. 12 is bigger than 7, so it moves out of the way to the right. Let's go back through the sorted list. 10 is bigger than 7, so it moves 1 to the right. Let's go back through the sorted list. 9 is bigger than 7, so it moves 1 to the right. Move back in the sorted list. Right, 6 is not bigger than 7, so we've found our insertion point. It is 1 to the right of where we're currently looking. So we're currently looking at index 2, so we're going to place the 7 at index 3. 2, 4 and 6 don't have to move. We're writing them down because we're doing it graphically. And that is, he says, using his shift key again, hopefully a sorted list. It's all about clarity, which is why the next one is terrible. Bubble sort is not easy to show clearly. Why we are saddled with a sort that nobody uses was written as an academic exercise to show how bad sorting can be and should never be in any production code. But we're still talking about it. I don't know why. But there you go. Right, I'll stop the recording.